Okay, something strange happened with the uh, startup, and all the music went away at the wrong time, so, yay. Don't know if you've noticed, but I've got a few additions to my little uh, collection. Like, uh, this big guy who just showed up today. <laughs> it's a really big, uh, really big one. It's like a 42-inch um, lizard doggo from Satisfactory. He's quite nice. Came in a tiny little box and I had to stuff him. There's a little zipper on the bottom. But, you know, he's nice. He's got a magnetic tongue. My biggest problem is I think the magnet's not strong enough. It's like a little tiny magnet and it really need to be like a, a large magnet. I mean, you take a, a, a slug, it'll hold on there. That's pretty good because they're both really good, you know, magnets, you know. But, that same magnet in this, uh, you know, thing of, uh, you know, radioactive waste, I can feel it connect, and it will stay there for a moment, but it likes to fall off. And, near as I can tell, not a single magnet in the berry. No, nowhere can I find the magnet for this thing. Oh. Did I? I think I found the magnet. It's just right there, and it's still not strong enough. It's, yeah, I, I, okay, I, I found the magnet. It's very movable. Let's, oh. and right now it's on, uh, it's on the top somehow. There it is. But it's just not that strong of a magnet, so. Biggest complaint. I love the size of him. I think he's great. Uh, the hard part's going to be finding a more permanent home for him. Alrighty, so tonight we are going to do some more Unreal Engine uh, work for Azeroth. And uh, to uh, get us started, we're actually going to uh, do some uh, work in the uh, uh, WDT file where we're actually going to read the file. Yay! Alright. Oh, you know what? Let's get over here. There we go. So, first things first, I need music. Uh, yeah, Stranglethorn, that works. All right, so, I am working in the main folder where I am trying to get this iHandle file to actually, you know, work. And it's been working for a little bit. Uh, I think I need to do a static cast, or maybe tell it to just go in there. All right. Um, uh, yeah, let's try a static. Static cast. Now, do I do main data? Or do I want to static cast this as a... Uh, ah. Uh, no. Here's the thing. Here, here's the data that I need. And let me just double check that. I'm not sure if that's accurate. It seems to be, but I'm not certain. <laughs> At any rate, uh, read handles a U8, you know, destination. Destination buffer holds the results. Should be, uh, should be least bytes to read in size. Returns true if the operation completed successfully. Destination buffer. Destination buffer is D. Do I need to make D a... Uh... Uh... 
do int underscore eight. Do int eight. So if I tell it that it's just that. Nope. Uh, dynamic cast. is even worse. <laughs> Unless... Alright, that technically works, but uh, not quite. Uh, let, me, let me take a quick look. Yeah, it's trying to read into a destination. Uh, I handle read results. Here we are. All right. I handle source file. Yes. Oh, read. Open read. Yep. was doing some cleaning of the garage, you know, looking at all of my, you know, stuff, and, you know, that's where, you know, a lot of the other stuff that's up on the shelves now came from. Uh, Lizard Doggo just showed up today. <laughs> I I think I ordered him, uh, like, a year ago, it feels like. It probably hasn't been that long, but uh, you never knew. All right, open to read. Source file does not equal null. I actually needed to go back and do that. Because I think I did that somewhere. Alright, that goes there. If, if, okay. Yeah. If it equals null, we'll error out. Total bytes, packet count, U8 buffer. Okay. All right. Contents get data. What? What's this? Where's contents? How is it doing get data? And I copy file the device. Uh, oh, it's just a T array. Okay. So, uh, read into struct. Yep, read file in the structure. Maybe that's what I need to do, is do this with a F file, rather than the uh, built-in uh, I file handle, which, you know, Unreal Engine says is, you know, oh, that's a better choice, but I'm not sure I want to do a, a, a U8, so, I don't know. Uh, 
Yeah, we need that to be the data. Oh, no, 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 cancel. Buffer. Uh, things just you know, freeze up. And there we go. Equals new, you and eight. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll tell this to read into the buffer size of the main data. And then... Uh, D equals reinterpret cast main data buffer. That should work. Fingers up. And if so, this is basically how we're going to be doing things for the foreseeable future. Because, you know, it's working with the built-in stuff from uh, Unreal Engine. If I get rid of that, it will have a... Is that going to throw a hissy fit? It doesn't look like it, but uh, you never know until you build it. So let's build this. And let me uh, dock this over here. So this is my little test level. Uh, I have an ADT and a WTT file just you know dragged in here. These are the uh, actors that we were working on last time. Uh, as you can see, I got some uh, nice little uh, icons set up for them. So I can see that that's a WDT and that's an ADT. And uh, you know, if I were to uh, come down here to my C++ classes and drag another ADT actor in here, it's just right there. Hey, that worked. Perfect. All right. Let's make sure that this gets set up to... Oh, where the heck is it? All right. This is not where I told it to be. All right, there we go. So let's read the data. Okay, it says it read it. That's good. It means there is no e errors. So now let's come back into here and now we need to go through and uh, actually, no, we'll kill all that. Or at least that part. So, WDT's DDP source or source data. Wait, is that how I did this? No. Ah, main chunk. Alright. Main chunk. Read. Alright. 
So let's add a uh, line in here. Log main chunk red. That. And now let's uh, come back here to the actor, and I'm actually going to, uh, at least temporarily, make this visible. Uh, visible anywhere. And I want this to be blueprint read only. It'd be nice if I could zoom this up. Oh. Unrecognized type. Oh, it probably needs to be... Uh, fine. Won't do that. So, after the source data is read... data all right and we'll do a warning just so it's easy to see Number of main chunks. Percent I. All right, so this will probably work. Uh, can I? Yeah, enable word wrapping. Chunk red. All right. So why didn't it display this? Oh, WDT actor. All right. So yeah, there we go. Number of main chunks. All right. So, now we can process this. Is 
prison bull. Anywhere. Read only. Category. Debug. There we go. All right. So now what we'll do, now that we have uh, this data, or int i equals zero, i is less than the number of chunks, i plus plus. All right, so this is gonna be a big deal. Let's uh, log this. Actually, let's hold off on that. Uh, we want All right. main data, data equals that. If data offset is greater than zero, all right, I forget how to do the math for this. Actually, you know, let, let's make this easier for myself. Uh, this will be y, y, 64, y. Copy, paste, x, x. All right, so y times 64 plus x. So that's gonna be our index. So this will get our data. If the data offset is bigger, uh, has chunk, uh, has ADP X percent or X I Y percent I. Okay, and now we can just do uh, X and Y. So this is going to give us uh, quite a bit of uh, a long list. But it should uh, do pretty well. And I want... Hello! I am so sorry I missed your, your, your chat. Uh, I am actually uh, working on writing uh, a bit of code that should let me import uh, some aspects of uh, the World of Warcraft universe into Unreal Engine. You forgot host were added. Yeah, me too. I, I forget that sometimes. <laughs> All right. So what I'm basically doing right now is I'm doing a test. I'm I've been writing all this code 
to read the file and now we're going to see if we can actually get the data we need. So let's uh, come back into here, we'll compile. Okay. Uh, compile the log results. What, what are you up to? Struct ADD placer is missing. Oh, okay. I see. All right. So we come back up here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, what now? Oh, generated body. <laughs> Keep forgetting all the important parts. <laughs> all right, what did I forget now? Blueprint read only should not be used on private members. Okay. I, I only need that for... Uh, figure things out. What's next? My firstborn? Oh, it looks like it's actually going to compile this time. Unless there's some sort of other compiling error. Isn't that right, lizard dog? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right, isn't it? <laughs> All right, looks like this one's actually going to compile. All righty. We'll show the ADTs. Or rather, the WDTs. All right, read file. And we crashed. <laughs> All right, read from file. And the ADT actor 40, line 46. If data offs. Oh, you know what? I need to put in a. Uh, an if there. If data. Actually, you know, we'll do if data and. That's right. It's the problem when you have like five different pro you know, programs going in your head at once. You keep forgetting which one's which. Alright, close that sending. Oh, what what my flesh hells? Oh, it's still it was still compiling. Okay. So, we were running into issues where there was no data. Oh shit, this won't work. Fuck. No wait, this would work. What the hell? What was I thinking? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I wasn't thinking! No, the, the, the read should uh, do everything we need. So let's go to the main. Move that over there. I like the C plus the, the, the header files ahead of the chunks. So, yeah, we set it to there. It gets the new data. It goes through all the uh, X's and Y's, grabbing all the data. Dumps it into there. So I guess there may be a problem in here if it's not getting the data. No, that's not the problem. Oh, no, it's initializing it. Then am I doing something wrong here? Because, uh... We should be getting the data. 
And honestly, it should be that. But there's some sort of, uh, you know, TRA. And get data gets us what we need. So that should work. I don't know why it's not. Well, we'll open up the uh, project and find out. But if I can get this working the way I want it to, it means I can just click one button and import all of a single map. Eventually. Right now we're working on getting it to read the one file, and then eventually we'll get it to, uh, you know, you know, the one file that has that says, hey, ADT files are here. We, we need you to read them. Oh yeah, sure, I'll definitely read them. Oh, what do you want me to read? Uh, the ADT file, or the WDT file. Oh, okay. Uh, what's this file do again? It tells you whether there's uh, ADT files there. Oh, didn't know it did that. And that's the problem. I need you to know it did that. Uh. All right. So, ah, uh. what? I want to dock this? Yeah. Oh well. Read data and crash. Ah, <sighs> still line 46? Access violation. What the hell, then? Okay, am I doing this wrong? Main chunk data. And data has a list of uh, all the chunks in there. All right, index percent i int index equals that. Wipe all that out, put that in there, put that in there. And for right now, let's just turn that off. Let's see if we're getting the right numbers. So if I'm doing it correctly, this should go from 0 to uh, 4,995. All right, now that's causing an error because uh, we don't have the file set, and I really wish it would save that file setting. Uh. Yeah, I'm going to save that. Just in case. <laughs> All right, read. Oh. It'd help if I actually built this. <sighs> yeah, I got everything set up, but then I forgot to build it, so... Uh. Alright, compile. I'll get this over here. Oh, what's going on now? What? 
error in the doodad actor. Let's try doing a recompile. Nope. Same error. These are all generated files. Ah, I might have to do one of these. Oh good, this is actually actually saved the setting. Why can't it save where my camera is though? I suppose I could have done the uh, the index and then reversed the, the, uh, this index setting in order to get the uh, X and Y. So while we're waiting on this, let me show you some of the things I actually dug out of my historical uh, archives. Uh, <laughs> found some uh, old transformers of mine. <laughs> this guy uh, transforms into a bird, and his twin brother transforms into a wolf. I actually found one of the guns that they own. You know, <laughs> I'd forgotten how crappy some of these look, but you know, they're still pretty good. So, uh, I have uh, the third lion from Voltron, and I think I saw a full Voltron in a box that I haven't uh, had a chance to sort through yet. Uh, got another Transformer. This one goes to and from a tank, but it doesn't really look good outside of the tank mode, so... Okay, so, got that done. Let's see if this will read. Hey! Index numbers are looking correct. All right, so. All right, so that's the T array of data. Array get data. Helper function for returning typed pointer to the first array entry. Um, hmm. See, those are all the constructors. Here's the functions get reference oh add get reference add unique append begin bulk serialize check address contains gains by predicate copy count bytes uh, find no, find by key. The key's the index, right? Coming here. Get data. Hmm. <laughs> 
Okay. That seems to work, I think. It's like I'd, I'd like to be able to get an index. You know, get from an index. Uh, I mean, maybe find by key works. So, find. Find by key. Index. <laughs> All right, back to that. All right. So no clue if this is going to work. We'll find out. Compile. <laughs> I found a glow in the dark Ninja Turtle. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I don't know if he glows right now. A little bit. Yeah, he hasn't had a chance to charge. I mean, the will He's not exactly in, you know, bright light right now, so. Uh, <laughs> found a battle droid that I really like, yeah, so. I think I used this guy as a uh, example. Okay, we had an error. What was the error? Binary operator not found. Okay, so there was no way to convert. Uh, yeah, look at all these errors. All right. Basically, they're saying uh, you, know, you can't find it using this index. So let's uh, let's try doing the get data. See if that one works. If data does not equal no, well, you know what? We're going to get data one way or the other. <laughs> Oddly enough, the reading of the data is way easier to do in Python than it is in C++ with the Unreal Engine code. <laughs> So that works. All right, let's see if this actually does work. Um, that doesn't seem right. Okay, that looks better. Although the X going down to zero, that does not sound right. Yeah, that does not sound right at all. But, you know, let's do a check on this. All right, so 21 times 64. Wondering if I'm reading too much information because I only did a, uh, a file read eight. So 
I reading too much information? I don't know. Um. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm reading too much information. Because this is saying that the main chunk only reads 8 bytes of data. just a little bit faster to do it in here. All right. Yeah, it's definitely reading bad information. It should not be getting to the edge. There's only one that goes to the edge that I know of, and that's Kalimdor, and that's because they have this little tiny island in the upper right-hand corner, which was uh, just for GMs. There are only two ways to go there. Uh, the first is being summoned by a, a, a GM, and uh, the other is to have a private server and teleport yourself there. What's going on over here? Okay. Looks like Ark over on uh, the Cure servers are doing well. By the way, I don't know if anybody's uh, noticed, uh, I put a, uh, a short up on uh, uh, YouTube today. Uh, first time ever doing that. Uh, you can find it on the Uncut channel. It's also on my, uh, there's also a copy of it on my main channel, but uh, the Uncut channel is a little bit more popular. So um, there should be a link down below if you want to go check that out, or if you're watching this on YouTube already, check out my previous videos, and uh, maybe you'll be able to see it. Give us an upvote if you liked it. It was... Uh, some of the fun stuff we did with Joe the other day. So, all right, build complete. And uh, you know, let's uh, let's see if this worked. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Yeah, that's all the bad stuff. Yep. That is more of what I wanted to see. Perfect. Okay, so we are actually getting the data. That is fantastic. So, I can uh, log that off. And now that we have this data, we need to create an FA placer. Uh... Book data. X equals X. Book data. Y equals Y. Uh, ADT. Place. What did I call it? What did I call it? ADT list, just ADT list, okay. ADT list, push, lock data. Ah, pushing the lock data. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to comment that out. We may need that in the future. So this should uh, put a whole, all, everything we need into this list rather than printing it out over here. So let's actually uh, do that over there. The fact that we got it to read, fantastic. I mean, that was like one of the large hurdles for doing this swap over. But now that we can easily do that, and we could just read it straight into the uh, a T array and then, you know, reinterpret it is amazing. I'm so happy that works.
So the EDT uh, file uh, works a lot like the WDT file, at least in terms that we can set the uh, source mesh. We can t uh, you can actually choose if you want to do a mesh or a landscape, and that will make a difference later. But we have read data, create landscape, and we can place do do ads and WMOs. While over here, all we can do is place you know ADT files, because that's the only data we have from this. Uh, now, in an ideal world. I would have a one button do everything, but I, right now I have it all as separate functions so that, you know, we can, you know, first read the data, make sure that's all correct. And then, yep, there are now 6,000. There are 600 entries here. And according to this, it's all zeros. At least it looks that way. I think what I'd have to do... is this. Visible anywhere. So with that, it actually will see X and Y. But the fact that it actually has the ADT list, that is great. But it made me realize something, actually. <laughs> when we do a read from file, the first thing we need to do, ADT list clear. Empty. So, we're just going to wipe everything out every time we do a read from, uh, data from file. So it will basically clear this whole ADT list. Yeah, I'm assuming that, that that data is not correct. It looks... Oh, it's a bunch of brackets! I thought it was zeros, but no, that's brackets. You know, I'm, I'm probably in the way. You know, let me you know, appear. And you can see we have uh, the read from data function and the place function. I probably need to put tooltip stuff, but... Yeah, we have, an AD, we have an ADT list right here, and there's a bunch of indexes and we can't read what's what's in there cuz you know it wasn't public at that point but you know that's our debug say what you will i thought the uh, world of warcraft movie was decent i thought it was you know the music was phenomenal the story was okay. I, I thought they could have, you know, they could have done a little bit more with it. But at the same time, you know, they were, you know, trying to set up the world for it. But it was pretty faithful to, uh, to the games. The orcs were phenomenal. I think I still have that movie somewhere. <laughs> Seriously, I kicked this and that made all my monitors flicker? Hmm. What's going on here? Ah. All right. So now can I read it? Yes, I can. Good. And those are all wrong. Yeah, let's do a, a read. 
There we go. Now I can see them. All right. Yes, that's much better. <laughs> so that is a list of all the ADT files and their X and Y coordinates. So now we need to be able to do place ADTs. And what that will do is uh, generate ADT actors as a sub object. So, you know, in here in the list, they would actually be parented. So everything they do would be relative to the AD, the WDT file. I've decided that this is how I wanted to do it because, you know, it just makes the, uh, the tree easier, especially when we get down to ADTs and they'll have, you know, sub objects of their own. And the hard part there is going to be identifying, uh, you know, you know, large, you know, model objects that are going to, you know, span multiple, you know, landscapes. But, uh, this is going to be the first step. So, now we come back in here. That's all good. We can pretty much just leave this, you know, leave this functionality as is. Uh, let's actually turn that off. We don't need that. And that can be a log. Actually, I don't need that at all. So, placing ADTs. Which brings up the big question, how? Uh, Unreal C++ spawn actor as child. Solve by creating an actor blueprint and placing it in the world, then using attach actor to actor after spawn. Okay. So let's just do uh, spawn actor. Got a spawn actor in C++. Been trying for nine hours now. <laughs> All right, so. The process of creating a new instance of an actor is known as spawning. Spawning actors is performed by using the world spawn actor function. Okay. Alright, so four each. And ADT. List. So it's going to be a Placer, uh, you long data. Yeah, we'll just do data. So what we want to do is you world. So we spawn actor. And we have parameters we can use here. Okay, usage. This is pond. Yeah, spawn this. Okay. Pond ADP. AK acid. <laughs> wow, what could that be for? ADT actor. Spawn actor. Static class. Name none location. Soon we who equal. ADT actor. Save.
Okay, so... Do I still have access to the Defines? I should have access to Defines. Because I'm going to need that. And actually, I think I need to add one or two in here. Fine. Uh, yards to centimeters equals like ninety-four-five. I actually have this in my uh, in my Python settings. Uh, open containing folder. Wow, common. Yep, yards to centimeters. There we are. Uh, everything else looks like it's okay. I don't know if I'm going to use all this. But that's the big one. Include... Wow, format slash define. Yep, there we go. Spawn templates. Hmm. Okay, so <sighs> vector location. I don't know if that needs to be that or that. Equals vector or f vector. And now let me actually uh, go back to Python. <laughs> size minus ADT zero point And then the, let's see, times <laughs> yards to centimeters, copy, paste, change that to Y. And make that zero point zero. What do you mean? That is an expression. Don't tell me I did that wrong. Oh. There. Yeah, I did that wrong. Okay, I don't need you anymore. I don't need you. I don't need Still need you. Alright, 
So, what are you in trouble for? Spawned ADT. Attach to actor. Self. This. Attachment rules. Oh, I need attachment rules. Okay. Attachment transform rules. Is that what I need? Rotation spawn parameters. Uh, I need to look this up. <laughs> yeah, attachment transform rules. That's what I need. ATR. attachment transforms <laughs> now why, why are you screaming at me and all I've done is declare you uh, keep relative transform equals no Okay, so attachment rule. <laughs> Snap the target. Uh, false. Okay, let's check out spawn after, because that's apparently having an issue. A small. All right. Ah. Okay. 
So... Class, rotation, rotation, spawn parameters. Okay. F. Rotator. Oh, okay. Transform. Well, is there others? Um, location, rotation. It's got to be that. Is that right? Maybe. Uh, no. Templated actor with transform. F rotator. That one should work. Oh, this one's templated. So what happens if I do... Okay. So it's going to snap to the target, not meld anything. And it should, you know, hopefully center everything. Just for testing purposes, I'm going to take this out 2,000 meters, well, centimeters. Let's save the package. That's right, save that package. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, we had errors. Uh, Non-standard for each use. Replace with range 4 statement. What? This was... Do I have to make it that? No. Ah, four... Four each. ADT list. No, no, it should just be ADT list. Yeah, that, there's no difference there except for the name. So I don't get what the problem is. What, what was the problem? Line 65. Yeah. Error. Non-standard extension. Ah. 
Okay. So, for const data ridiculous. Apparently that's proper for a for loop. We'll try it. Now, on what sorts it's going to happen? It, it errors out again and I have to figure out a different solution? I mean, it could do that. Looks like I'm just gonna. Yay! Alright. Read data. Place. Okay. Okay, well, it, it placed all 600 right there. So, the good news is it actually, you know, did that. Uh, now we need to do some internal work. So, I actually want to come back into Actor. And I want to make sure that it has the variables for X and Y built into it. Ah, it does. So, spawn actor x tile equals x, or data x. Spawn dt y tile equals data y. And, you know, we'll have to do the, uh, the script later, but uh, this will be good. So, I think the first thing we need to do... Oh, let's uh, do a rename. Uh, add actor local offset location. Maybe not snap. Uh, no, I want to snap. We'll we'll set its off local offset you know, afterwards. That way it gets added, it goes right to it, and then we push it off center. Name. The pen name. Uh, source file tag rename. Uh, I'll probably label. Set actor label. F string format text. ADT percent I underscore percent I. Alright, 
What do you complain about? So if I just do that, you'll be happier. So, <laughs> and reels, F string format. Make it an F string from all its little variables. Print F. text just to make sure that this is correct because sometimes it's going to it have a problem Now, what I'll need to do is I'll need to go through and do a delete for that. But, just having it there is going to make things easier. Alright, delete all those. So now we're back to here. Let's read the function just again. And place. Okay, it looks like they're still all there. But look, they've they're properly named now. Oh, that one is out here. Um uh, undo. No, no, no. I, I just want the billboard to be 50 times big. Okay, maybe that's a bit too far. I feel like it's not uh, I feel like it's not set up correctly, but it does tell me that I need to make these uh, billboards like you know fifty times bigger. And uh, screen size. Size. Okay. That's not a terrible hard, terribly hard thing to do. So we'll come in here. Billboard set sprite. Billboard component. 
uh, B is screen size. It's true. Screen size equals 0 0.0001. Correct? Sure looks that way. Relative 3D scale to F vector 50. And we're probably going to want to do roughly the same thing over here with the 80 with uh, this actor. But the fact that it's uh, renaming them all correctly, that is fantastic. So when we read the data, we need to actually probably rename the WDT actor. So let's uh, do that real quick. Now since that's just right in here, we can just set our actor label. So, WDT percent S, because we're just going to pass in the, uh, the last value for the screen name, or the source file name. And we just need... File path, file name. No. Nope. Mm. You know what? F path. Projects, get extension, get clean, get base file name, that's what we want. You typed it in too many times. <laughs> okay, so that should rename it to, you know, the proper path. Uh, now we're actually getting the actor list, you know, dealt with. Let's actually do a four. ADT actor. Okay, object pointer ADT actor. ADT destroy. Net force. You know what? It's all fine. I mean, I, I suppose what I should do is actually go through the list, see if there is a corresponding uh, actor in the list, and if so, just update that. And then, you know, create, you know, while I'm doing that, create a list of, uh, you know, actors that it doesn't have, and then just add those. 
maybe for the next pass. Right now, I'm just trying to get this to work and you know get all the ADTs to show up in the correct spot. Double X equals. And that means this will make this easier to uh, modify locations and everything. All right, let's rebuild. Okay, no, that's what the zero point is, so. What's the problem? Invalid arguments? So it's saying that the uh, the print string does not work with uh, adding the string. I keep forgetting that I gotta prepend that with a with a star. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. So if I'm taking away half of the center point, 
then why is it still way over the hell over there? Or for you guys, way the hell over there. Maybe it needs to be added, not subtracted. What happens if we just uh, go straight that? Oh, you know what? Instead of uh... no, wait, that's that's fine. So let's see how this works. Let's do a read. Hey, it got renamed. It's also super tiny now. Probably because I didn't scale that up. Is that what I forgot to do? I forgot to scale this up. Oh, did I really, really mess this up? No, no, no. I want the WT Azeroth. Yeah, that's... That's supposed to be... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it should be. Can I lock that? Uh, yeah. So even if I select something else? What does the pinning mean? Oh, okay, that was the issue. All right. All right, let's try placing the ADTs. Holy shit, did that work? Now keep in mind, this is still zeroed. Oh, am I getting this wrong? Am I putting this in the wrong order? Or am I just looking at this wrong? Okay, there is an ADT on there. So, what we'll probably want to do is take this and scoot it up. Let's say 2,000. So we can see still that the, AD, the WDT is there. And the ADT is, you know, underneath it. So we can still select them both. And that is 32.32. So if I select the WDT, and the whole world moves with me. Fantastic. Which means if I rotate it 90 degrees... Oh, look at the clouds move as I go across Azeroth. Now, we might want to scale things up or down, I don't know which, because I'm looking at this right now and I'm not sure that's the correct size for an AD, uh, ADP, but it's not bad. Okay, so we're going to come in here, we're going to move the WDT to 2000. And we'll leave uh, the ADTs at 50. Actually, we can put them down. Yeah, I want to leave them at 50. I want them slightly above the landscape itself. Oh, did I find...
Um. All right, so I think we got that dealt with. There's still the big question of what the heck is uh, north. So let's go top down, center. Well, the good news is it looks like it's fine. So it's actually in the correct location. Because I can see all of those little dots. So here's the question. Is this actually the correct... Uh... <laughs> You're seeing continues a sky dome mesh, yes. Is this the correct size and placement for these? I think so, but I'm not certain. But the good news is it actually is placed correctly. You know, we reset that rotation. So this is actually north, if I'm if I understand correctly. That would make this south. Although I'm not certain about no, that's north. So the way that we're looking now is north. That's south. The fact that this works at all is just makes me so happy, because rather than try to figure out uh, you know, all the settings and everything, we actually read this data directly from the, you know, we just read this data. And look, this one actually has the correct uh, X, Y, and tiles. So now what we need to do is actually get the, uh, we need to set the, the source file names and then read from, you know, get it so it will read that data. This data won't read because there's nothing to read. But we have uh, everything's in here. Everything's labeled correctly. It's, you know, taking the uh, <laughs> the correct, uh, you know, little bit here. It's all working exactly the way I wanted. I feel vindicated. I could end the stream here and be very happy, but no, we're going to keep going. We are going to take a short break, so I got to go use the bathroom. Be right back.
So I realized that I had forgotten probably one of the most important tests for this thing. And that is, let's see if it just creates more ADT files or if it will delete them when we do place again. It looked like it deleted them and then replaced them. So that's good news. All right, I'm gonna delete this. Uh, where's select? Uh, I wanna select everything. This and all the childs. So we're going to delete this from this file because this was always a uh, kind of an instance test level. We're going to save and we're going to actually change up to the proper level. Once it actually saves. <laughs> Come on. Ah, has to save all the assets. Clean those assets! So, uh, what we're going to work on first, is we're going to come in here, and we're going to add some more uh, changes to the spawn actor. So, spawn actor, uh, source file name, equals... And this is where we're going to have a little bit of fun. Now that's just an F string, so F string print. So that will take us to everything except the, fi the uh, file name. Or the extension is what we're going to want. And then percent i and then the extension. Get clean name. Uh, get path. Get project file path. <laughs> you know what? Let's just do get base file name, but then we'll do false. And now, data X and data Y. Followed by get extension. Oh, include dot. True. All right. If I did that correctly, which I should have. It will now generate the proper source file name and assign it to the ADT files. And I probably do need to update this so that it uh, updates the data rather than, you know, destroys and recreates it. But that'll be in the moment. All right, there we go, all done. Levels, Azeroth, let's open that. As you can see, it's a, it's a little bit uh, blanker of a world and I can actually safely remove those because that's old setups uh, load selected cells all right delete that now I can come down here grab my WDT file Set that at the very center of the world. Change that to the Azeroth file. Let's save. Read the data. And now place the ADTs. 
All right. Well, that did not set the the, the source, and it looks like that uh, this is still not in the uh, correct spot. Yeah, that was supposed. To, oh, that's because we haven't uh, updated. I forgot to compile. <laughs> I'm wondering if I should make the, AD, the WDT bigger. Well, we can take a look at that. tell you though uh, I had functionality for placing uh, WMOs but after that I've pretty much overcome what uh, you know they've done okay so you set that oh, yeah it's up there now so what happens if I set this to a hundred that's pretty nice. I set that to five. Okay, that's north. I need to I need to make a compass or something here. Um yeah, I think actually those are good settings. So let's come in here. We'll set that to 5,000 and set that to 100. And I don't, I'm not worried about uh, recompiling that right this second. I'm more curious as to if our ADT files will get uh, corrected when I... Uh... Actually, are they... Nope, okay. So read data, just to be safe and place. And source file name did not get set. Alright, what happens if I delete these? And then place again. Hey! Okay, that has the wrong extension. So, uh... Dot ...adp. There we go. Game files. Okay. And Kalimdor. All right, no, it does not look like I need to prefix it with zeros for the names. All right, so it looks like the ADTs are set correctly. Wait, where are they? Uh, that's not right. Place 
what the hell? What's going on? Well, they're still being put in the, I guess, the correct spot. But this one, why are you offset all of a sudden? Oh, probably because it updated without the zero point. Well, we're going to get those uh, updates to the WMO. <laughs> So yeah, hopefully in the uh, near future you're going to see a lot more decorations. I'm actually going to clear off my shelves and uh, try to figure out a new setup for that. And I don't know where I'm putting the doggo. I'd like to put him up top, but uh, he might fit in a, uh, one of the lower shelves too. I mean, you know, what, what do you guys think? You know, where should the lizard doggo go? I, I do not want to keep him in the chair, although I do like that concept. Uh, I'm thinking maybe that shelf or this shelf. He could also be on the lower shelf down there. What do you mean you want him hanging over the, the my monitors, looking at me and licking me every so often? I don't understand that. That's crazy, but I love it. All right, well, the big problem with, uh, oh, I think I deleted too many things. Yep, I deleted too many things. Uh, the big problem I am foreseeing, hey, cool, that's the right size. Uh, the big problem I'm foreseeing with uh, some of this stuff is, uh, yes, perfect. All right, is doing the skybox. That's going to be an interesting challenge. Because on the one hand, you want it to resemble WoW, but on the other hand, you want it to look better than WoW. And WoW just changes up their skybox, you know, depending on what zone you're in. I think I want it to do it a little bit more dynamically. Now, keep in mind, this is Azeroth to, uh, you know, Unreal Engine, but we're doing it in a pragmatic way, so there's absolutely no reason we can't do Northrend, uh, Outlands. I do not want to do anything post Kata right now. I don't want to do Kata because uh, that's going to require a whole new slew of code. I am working with, uh, you know, Wrath of the Lich King source files, and uh, I could make it uh, agnostic in that it will work with anything, but this is what I'm doing it for. I'd, I'd rather just, you know, make it the way I want. So, we got the WDT files and the ADT files. Have the right file names, good. So read from data. It finished reading the ADT file. Good. And it looks like they're all in the correct spots, I think. Uh, we won't know until we uh, start adding in other things, like, I don't know, meshes. But, chromatically, it looks correct. I can come in here and I can decide whether I want to do meshes or landscapes. Uh, eventually, you know, you know, it will probably start with meshes and do the whole thing nanite. But eventually I would like to be able to import them as landscapes. So we'll we'll see what happens there. All right, let's save Azeroth, literally. All right. Um. So I feel safe in saying that you know we're we're done with placing ADTs and inputting their data. 
they're doing the right locations and you know they've got their actor labels set correctly so we know what it is and where it is so now the next question is how do we set up the next stuff the next item um All right, so the next setup actually is getting the ADTs to read, write, and uh, hold all their data. Now, we're setting X tiles and Y tiles. Uh, we need to have it read the texture lists, the WMO lists, the doodad lists, and then the instances for that. And we have our billboard component there. <sighs> this isn't data position data. This isn't position data. This is instance data. So we have our root component, we have our billboard, which is used for editing and makes it easier to see things. Um, finish reading from the ADT file, I think that's what the uh, message said. Now, so is that actually reading the data? Let's uh, take a look. I don't think it is. Yeah, all it's doing is, uh, well, actually, it's trying to. So actually we need to tell it uh, how to do stuff. So right now it's looking for file names. Now, for the most part, we don't have to worry about that because uh, that's a cataclysm thing. So we actually need to add a new function in here. Read. So it's a very simple one. Void read. And we'll come up here. Void read file. Read 82. Alright, so create an implementation for that. We'll do double checking here. We want to make sure the input file name is set. All right. If input file name is empty equals true, and that is when we jump over here to our WDT file. And we're just going to effectively just copy all this code right here. Yeah, let's just make it read file, not read ADT file. So this is going to go through, it's going to try and, uh, uh, let's 
felt the log ADT rather than WDT. Uh, it's going to go through, try to find the file, make sure it's correct. And that's actually something I need to work on, but screw it. All right, what do I have for the file name? Ah, input name, file name. Why don't I put that for the... Uh, I should do that for the WDT actor too, or the WDT header. Is that file path on both? Should be. It is. Good. All right. Change in current document WDT to that. By making it uh, more of an agnostic, uh, uh, you know, more of an agnostic setting, I can actually reuse the code a lot more. I don't know, should that be above or below that? That's fine. I think I can turn that off. What's your problem now? Oh, the fact that I haven't declared it. <laughs> I could have sworn I did that already. Probably didn't. Probably did and then deleted it. I mean, that, that happens sometimes. Alright, so... This is where we're going to start our actual ADT file read. And I don't think I ever got that far in the Python stuff. Probably wrong. Actually, now that I think about it, very wrong. All right. All right. All right, let's uh, jump the main. Because I actually do need to do some reading here. So, copy that, paste that into here. All right, so and I need to read four bytes. char uh, I'll call this magic all right if magic equals <laughs> uh, ember
Actually, let's do, let's do this. Magic. And we'll just leave that out. Okay. Actually, could I just grab that and just toss it in there? I probably could, but... Uh, Ah. Alright, we got all this going. Starting to read file. Starting ADT file read. Unable to open ADT. Unable to open ADT. That's the nice part, is because it just changes the one letter. It is so easy to just, you know, swap it all out and have it work. I mean, you know, wouldn't that be just easy if everything worked like that? from file. Finished reading. <laughs> what? Oh, you know what? Never actually did that in here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Still to read. nice part is by setting this up to read you know you know we don't have to uh, do anything and when we uh, do the uh, WDT we can just create we can make a new function that's basically you know one button to rule them all we'll call it import import all or import everything Save, just be safe. And read. Error, magic. Okay. It read it. I can't decode it, but I can read it. Or it can see it, rather. Uh, let's go back into. You know, I don't need the WDT files anymore. Come back in here. What happens if I tell C? And let's set this to warning. Just so it's, you know, visible, but not crazy. And now I'm trying to remember, how did we do this once upon a time? I probably could take a look. Uh. Actually, let's look at this code.
Hmm. This does not seem right. file name what, what are you doing in here what are you doing okay so it must be somewhere else where I actually uh, check things for the first time Well, maybe WMO will be easier to understand for a quick moment. Um, get root file. All right. Oh, there's a function, validate file. I think I might have missed that. Uh, common classes, no. So it's probably farther back, like in utilities or something like that. Um, utilities. Common. No. Well, based on this, it should be. Settings functions, probably functions. Alright, going back to my other settings. Uh, validate file. There we go. Alright, so validate now. Okay, file name is correct, yes. Gets the in file info, it exists. Yes, okay. So first we validate the file, make sure that you know, there's nothing too heinous about it. Generate file names, get root file. Uh, root files because WMO root, yep. So is this something I put into the... I might have. No, I don't think I did. Sorry this is taking so long, I'm just going through and trying to uh, figure out exactly how this is working. Okay, it's returning that. MP header chunk. Alright, so now we go to map tile. I guess that's probably where the code I want is.
Okay, tell it to go read. Validates the core frame. Yes, okay. Initialize this chunk and then read file. Ah, here we are. Okay. Alright, validate. Read everything. Okay, so it, it's reading everything into memory and then doing the check. I think I gotta go to a different program. I mean, what I would love to do is have that work, but uh, I don't think it does. This is really, really old code I'm looking at now. <laughs> but I want to see. I'm trying to remember how we did this. Okay, just file read into a char. So what happens if I put this as char? Char buffer incompatible all right so you and eight Okay, let's uh, actually look this up on internet. internet. Uh, UNT8 to char. Okay. No, it looks like this is uh, how we'd want to do it. Let's see if this works. I mean, you know, more than likely that was the result of trying to read cars as strings and as opposed to just having strings or cars and I am saying car key C H A R as character as opposed to car the vehicle okay so that succeeded And <laughs> it's even worse. I still can't read it. Um, all right, well, let's see. Uh, let's see what they say here in uh, Unreal Engine. Um, read to car. Another C++. Read bytes. So it's reading the bytes, but how do we convert? Well, what if we don't? We'll just.
What if I just did that? I mean, that'll probably fail too. Let's try this. We'll put that back to string. And now we'll do an F string. We want to re interp cast this car. Now we'll set that to magic. That seems to have a, not have a problem. And we'll try again. The big thing is making sure that we can test if magic is a value that we want. We want to make sure that we're actually loading the correct files. Now this may be actually be an instance where we want to use the uh, uh, my little data setup. Yeah, I'm sorry I can't get uh, this lo output log to be any bigger. Hey, it actually worked. So it's actually seen Rev M with a character at the end. Hmm. So we can just do that. Skip a whole little bit. So, if I were to grab that and do a if that equals rev m, okay, let's set that to log now. And now we will say, uh, file is actually no if it's yeah file is uh wait is rev m what i want yeah right. file is wow format file Now we'll read another four. Now this one is an integer. So we can just read buffer straight. We don't need to do anything. If buffer 
equals 4. File is correct size. And we're just doing a couple here just to make sure. And then finally, another four for version. So we want size and then version. And if it's 18, that will be correct. File is correct version. So the reason I'm doing these as positives rather than negatives is to ensure, what's going on there? That's weird. Uh, is to ensure that we're actually getting the values we need and we can do these uh, you know, need these conversion measurements. Because then I can invert them and then cause them to be an error. It's not often I hang up up here, is there? <laughs> Usually I'm uh, you know, down there in the corner, but today I'm right here. Sometimes I'm down there. Rarely am I over there, but, uh, you know, <laughs> you change it up when you can, and you live with it when you can't. Oh, we got a lot of errors. Nice. Typecast pointer truncated. Typecast, yes. Do I just have to reinterpret cast the whole goddamn thing? Fine. probably better for everyone anyways. Si oh. Int size equals reinterpret cast int buffer. So, I suppose I could do this whole magic thing. Yeah, let's do that. F string header. Uh, no, not not that. Um, File prefix. File head chunk equals F stream car. All right. I wonder if my turtle glows yet. Yeah, a little bit. I think what I need to do is put them in the sun, give them some direct light for a bit. Oh, what's now? All right. Um, pointer truncation. Huh? Reinterpret cast and also giving me a truncation. Interesting.
All right, so maybe I do that. Oh no, I do that. I want to dereference it basically. Okay, maybe it's that. Uh, let's see. Oh, we could do a static cast, not a thing. We interpret cast, so uh, static cast int. Yeah, that's going to work. Yeah. Problem is, I was trying to reinterpret it into something it was already interpreted to. I do like Lament of the Highborn. Beautiful song. Uh, definitely look forward to that as our uh, template when we... Uh, go through uh, the undead city because uh, my plan here is eventually you know once we get you know a lot of this stuff able to load in correctly is to uh, do like fly through videos set to you know songs from World of Warcraft all right read data file size was correct Okay, so we're getting this last symbol. So what happens if I put this a static cast? Stathok. Stathokik! No. No, it's gotta be a reinterpret cast. Uh what if I make this uh, no, it's gotta read four bytes. That's how it works. All right, and it's returning rev m, but with a additional symbol at the end. It's like I want to do start with. Yeah, starts with. I guess that works. No, I want to be able to do equals. So, all right. So, uh, uh, C plus plus. Reinterp cast car extra car. I do a constant car. You int eight to car.
<sighs> well, the good news is we have the uh, integer information. That's down pat, so we're good with there. The problem is this uh, this car data. File 101. Yeah, I think I, I broke I broke it. So what was if I maybe just doing it constant will uh, solve that. Uh, since we have a moment here, I'm actually going to compile it here, clear out all the old codes and stuff. convert a byte array of uint8 into a readable f string. Hello, Unreal Engineers! <laughs> uh, trying to read f string from a binary file. Alright. Card at Ansky. That could be our, you know, our problem. I keep forgetting some of these macros exist. All right. to stream. speed up though really high. Alright. Alright, well we're getting a little bit closer. So they have a bytes of string. Is that what I need to do? This F string bytes to bytes to 
string. Here we are, beats bites a string. Um, okay, so I can just do that. Number of bytes to convert, four. I don't know if this will work. This might work. Let's find out. <laughs> if so, that makes, you know, things a hell of a lot easier. Because I could just put bytes to string right here and it, it should work. Yeah, whenever you find a function, you can... Okay. All right. Um... Nope. <laughs> uh, that is not right. String representing bytes. Byte array value to convert. Uh, huh. well, do we have anything else interesting? Um, <laughs> type defs, enums. Functions. Here we are. Bytes to hex. Bytes to string. Car cast. Let's try bytes to hex. Maybe that'll work. Bytes to hex. I mean, that sounds more plausible, actually. Da, 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 da. Convert hex to bytes too. Neat. All right. And the results are Nope. Okay, here's a crazy question. What happens if I just, you know, straight up print the buffer? Just straight up that. I 
I have no idea if that will work. Oh. Well, let's uh, do that in here. And it's already failed because something else happened. Oh. Okay, this got far enough along that I actually have to do a rebuild of that. Oh well. <laughs> so this is the other big challenge, is trying to, you know, see if we can read chunks and determine if, you know, we can actually look at this. Once we get past, you know, reading the chunks, that's pretty much just a lot of just writing in the code. It's just, you know, once we get past this, you know, section, can we check and make sure it's an Ember file? Or rather, a Revem file? Well, nope, we're having a problem here. Yep, having a problem here on uh, line 103. Logical operation, huh? No conversion from constant car 5 to uint. I'm just going to Bypass that part. So that should have done most of the uh, issues, so now we can actually compile back in here. But just bypassing that, we can see you know, if this is going to output you know, what we want. But we've already learned, we just can't straight up con you know, you know, test these two. What if I put text here? Can I convert these? What if I make this a text? Maybe from Hex Blob is the solution. Convert a buffer to a string by hexifying the elements. That sounds like what we were using before on the other one, but who knows? Maybe this one will work. Nope.
What happens if I put this to five? This is the downside of uh, doing some of this stuff. You just gotta go for it. Alright. From blob converts a buffer to a string. So we'll try that if that doesn't if this doesn't work. Nope. Alright, let's just convert from blob. And we'll go 4, which I think is correct. I do hope this is correct. <laughs> be nice if it was and it actually worked and I can say yeah we're, we're good let's go <laughs> I wonder if Joe's streaming he was gonna play I don't know if he's streaming let me check twitch I can't yeah he's streaming oh according to this he's playing cool tonight that doesn't sound right I'm bringing back my spicy chicken strips go away all right here we are read from data <sighs> no, no, he's playing Goldeneye. Alright. So. Am I just doing something wrong? So I borked that. <laughs> uh, somebody out there is probably screaming at the monitor for a moment. Going, no, you're still ready from the buffer. But the, uh, the, the check magic was not. So it would have, uh, it should have worked. If it was working. But more than likely, you're just an extra character at the end. Oh, what's going on now? Invalid arguments. Once again, someone screamed at me and now feel highly superior. something. I'm not sure what, though.
Okay, let me try looking up ASCII. Blob. Do hex blob to the lower. From blob should have worked. From hex blob. Let's try that. Okay, I'm going to steal a co some code. <laughs> I mean, program something! Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, let's go to the utilities. Uh, functions. Inline. And I'll just uh, bring that right there. So this, you know, was, you know, bytes to string was actually very close for us, but it wasn't, you know, returning the correct values. Uh, upon looking at it, it sounds like what it's actually doing is uh, returning the correct values in the wrong order, or rather up one value. So we got that in there. Let's uh, do a compile, and hopefully this will uh, come out correct. Uh, 
at which point we can invert uh, most of our settings to uh, be errors. Whoa, what the? Oh. You're saying... Wait a second. Okay, no, not times. This is what the code he's given me says. I think it needs to be that. That's assuming you can actually do that with an F string. I don't have no idea. We'll find out. But if we come back here, let's see, where where do we start doing that? Okay, rev M. Yeah, that's correct, except all the values are backwards. Or ahead, you know, up by one. There we go. Rev M. And it is now a WoW type. Perfect. It's working. Woo! <laughs> so I can close that off. We can come in here make these errors and say if not uh, while well file that uh, file is not a wow file type header value percent s Yep. What do you complain about? Oh. <laughs> Return. Correct file size. Not the correct size. Size. Uh, 
supported size. And that's got to be not B4. And this will not be 18. File is not a valid ADT version. Supported version. There we go. So now it will only you know you know spit out an error if it doesn't match those first ones. But this is basic error checking that we probably should do with the other file, but you know, I wanted to you know, we need we need to do that here instead, I think. Okay. So at this point, we know it's an ADT file. So this is where we start having fun by uh, actually reading into chunks. So, let me uh, check this out. Okay, so we need to do an F pause. Or F T pause. What is it? Tell I int int sixty four. F pause equals tell. So here we we just want to know where we are. So actually, it's label this file position. There we go. File pause is fine. Um, this will tell us where the beginning of the file is. And this is actually very important because it's going to tell us where all the offsets are. But that may not necessarily be, you know, what we have to do the way we have to do it. Let's start by, uh, let's see, I need to look up, uh, There we go. All right, and come in here, come in here. Okay, so the first chunk we need to deal with is the header chunk. So M header. There it is. Copy that. And now rebuild the project. I probably should put more than just one into it, but let's start small. All right, reload. And there it is. This is the header. And we need to, uh, you know, change this up to use uh, all the new info that we need. And I'm noticing a couple of issues right now. Let's start with... Uh, okay, and that can probably just be straight gone. And this... What are you having a problem with? 
You're fine. So I'm going to copy that. Paste. Actually, this is probably really, really bad. So, uh, <laughs> all right. So, file read into the buffer. And then this equals reinterpret cast into all that. Or should I do that? There we go. So in theory, this should work just fine. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, do I do I just straight up test this? Mm, I think I should just straight up test this. <laughs> All right. And header chunk. All right. M header chunk. Chunk. Uh, do I not have the M header chunk in here? Oh, you know what? I probably need to break this down into map tiles. Because I think I'm going a little off kilter here. No. So. Let's come down here. Actually, I want to take a look on how I do that in the uh, in my other program. Okay, so the way I do it in the other program is this way. I actually have the map tile and that is what everything gets read into. So what I would just do in this particular case is uncomment that and actually uh, let's grab the map tile. Drop that into the correct folder generate the project with the proper, you know, files now. Reload. Include. And now we have to come in here and make a whole bunch of changes. Like, you know, you can see I use, you know, QT for, you know, pretty much everything. We need to fix that. But I'm kind of thinking that's where we're going to end things for today. Definitely a lot more to do. There's a lot I got to, you know, oh, sorry. There's a lot I got to go through and, you know, kind of clean up, fix. Uh, the map tile is going to be a huge section. Uh, I'm probably going to come through and just wipe it all out 
and uh, just deal with it as we come come to it. Um, but I will be doing that probably off stream. Tomorrow is Star Citizen Sunday. Uh, I hope you'll all join me. Uh, if uh, yeah, last night's uh, Star Citizen Sunday, which will be airing tomorrow morning, uh, is any indication, then uh, I'm, I'm going to try and get uh, YouTube shorts out of it. And I'm going to try to upload them every so often. Uh, Alright, that's it for tonight. I hope you'll see me tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Although you won't see this until Monday. So come next Sunday. Uh, don't forget, you can always watch me live here on glimish.tv slash kajasi. There should be a link down in the description on YouTube, guys. Uh, of course, you know, I don't think, I don't know how many people are actually going to watch this portion of the video. Eh, we'll find out. Thank you all for joining. I'll see you next time. And until then, good night, everyone.